Now on KGW News, a touching tribute. Hundreds of strangers showing up for two local veterans who died without family. A Portland restaurant closed down after outcry over its name. And it's really painful and hurtful. Now the new owner says the controversy is still keeping people away. The space before us really, really damaged this location beyond my wildest dreams. But first, a young woman makes a drastic decision to get her stomach removed. Life has changed a lot. I mean, I'm really lucky to be alive. Why she felt she had no choice but to make the change. And thank you for joining us tonight. It is hard to believe that a person can live without a stomach. But Emily LaFranc of Woodland, Washington says the procedure saved her life. Our Mike Benner talked to her and her doctor to explain how it works. My dad was the kindest person I've ever met. Not a day goes by that Emily LaFranc doesn't think about her late dad. She'll tell you he meant the world to her. So gentle, so kind, really had Southern values as a person. So when he suddenly started acting differently. Angry and a little more emotional. Emily and her family knew something was wrong. And boy, were they right. Emily's dad was diagnosed with brain cancer. He died in spring of this year. He battled for five years and he fought so hard and he lived a great life. As if the brain cancer fight wasn't tough enough, Emily says tests revealed her dad had a mutation in his CDH1 gene. The gene mutation put him at risk for stomach cancer as well. But because his brain cancer was so advanced, there was nothing to do. Exactly. Emily, however, wasted no time getting herself tested for the gene mutation exactly. that can be passed down exactly within a family. Sure enough, she too carried the CDH1 gene mutation. Right now they think if you have the gene, you have up to an 80% chance of getting stomach cancer. Emily wanted nothing to do with that, so she took matters into her own hands. Yeah, I was going to get my stomach removed no matter what. You heard right. Emily made the decision to remove her stomach. Research led her to the National Institutes of Health in Bethesda, Maryland, and Dr. Jeremy Davis. We connected over Skype. Once you've developed stomach cancer, the likelihood of surviving it uh, five years down the road is, is pretty low. With that in mind, Dr. Davis and his team got to work. During an hours-long procedure last December, they removed Emily's stomach and connected her esophagus to her small intestine. Emily is, is in, in many ways, kind of a, a poster child for people with this problem in that she's handled it uh, really well. Here it is. That says a lot, considering what Emily found out after her stomach was removed. It wasn't stage Doctors had, in fact, found happened. cancer. From what I have heard and things that they've told me, it's such a fast-spreading cancer, and mine was already growing. Emily is now a lot healthier even without a so stomach. I just don't have a holding space for food, but the longer I go without having a stomach, the more my intestines will stretch over time, and that will give me kind of a pouch on its own. This is like That a said, Emily can only eat small portions. An egg roll bowl. And she needs to stay an away from too much sugar. I eat a lot of uh, chicken and uh, proteins like that and fish. I'm just going to heat it up really quick. So I try to feed my body with high protein meals. That little amount. As time consuming as it may be to make special meals. Um, every two hours. It's the least Emily can do. She knows the alternative is far worse. Realistically, I probably could have not even made it to my mid to late 20s if I wouldn't have known about this. <laughs> Emily, with her husband at her side, knows there will be tough days ahead. How can't there be for someone living without a stomach? But Emily is excited about her future. I just hope that I can be, that people can look at me and say, if she can do it, I can do it too. Um, because I really never thought that I could. What an attitude. Then again, are you surprised? Emily will tell you she learned from one of the best. I kind of credit my whole attitude to my dad. And a special thanks to Emily for sharing her story with us. As you can tell there, she is a courageous, courageous young woman. And tell you what, her journey is about to get a lot tougher before it gets easier. The CDH1 gene mutation she has also puts her at risk for breast cancer. So she plans to have a double mastectomy to avoid that. As she told me, if she went to such great lengths to avoid stomach cancer, she will do the same to reduce her risk of breast cancer. Wow, what a brave young woman. Uh, we sh certainly wish, wish Emily the best. This is going to be a tough road. Inspiring, no doubt. She is. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Mike. Now to get you caught up on tonight's headlines.
The impeachment inquiry goes public tomorrow morning. Congress will have a chance to ask questions in front of the cameras. Diplomats Bill Taylor and George Kent are slated to testify first. They're expected to repeat private testimony indicating the Trump administration froze military aid to Ukraine to force it to investigate former Vice President Joe Biden. Republicans will argue President Trump was trying to expose corruption and that Ukraine did get its military aid without starting investigations. The hearings begin at 7 a.m. our time. You can watch them live on air or on KGW.com. Bymart is closing all their pharmacies in their Portland area stores, including locations as far as way as, as far away as Newburgh and Sandy. Bymart says, frankly, the growing number of competing pharmacies just made it too hard to keep theirs open. The Bymart stores themselves, they will stay open. Prescriptions that will be transferred now to nearby Walgreens stores. The Corvallis School Board tonight accepted the resignation of one of its members, Brandy Fortson. She came under fire for tweeting, quote, Hey kids, always remember that all cops are... And she used an expletive to end that tweet. The post drew national criticism. New tonight, the owner of a boutique in downtown Portland, cleaning up after some vandals targeted his business. Take a look at what Nicosi on Southwest Harvey Milk looks like tonight. The owner showed up Tuesday morning, found the front window smashed up. It appears the suspects used some sort of metal object to do that. Fortunately, nothing was stolen, but the shop opened you know, more than three years ago, and the owner says uh, he moved here from West Africa. He tells us this is the second time now he's been vandalized, and he can't help but wonder if it's racially motivated. Maybe I, it's because I'm using African fabric. You know, Portland is not too much colorful place, and I don't know. I'm just thinking maybe he, people don't like what I'm doing. Oh. He says it'll cost more than $1,000 to repair the window. It's a lot of money for a tailor. A GoFundMe has been set up to help right now. You can find a link to that on our website at kgw.com. It's comforting and it's uh, redeeming and it makes me feel good. Hundreds turned out today to honor two veterans at the Willamette National Cemetery. They passed away without any family to mourn them. So the community stepped up instead. Lindsay Nadrich was there for the service where they were given full military honors. Marine Corps veteran Douglas Ray Walls and Navy veteran Danny Joe Mendenhall both passed away without any family. They're considered unclaimed veterans. But as the speaker said at today's service, unclaimed doesn't mean unloved. Hundreds of people showed up at their funeral to make sure their sacrifice for this country was honored. Because otherwise we wouldn't have the freedom to do this at all. A lot of people, including us, found out about the service because of posts on Reddit and Facebook. The turnout was more than anyone expected. It was very moving. Uh, I saw this posted on Facebook and had no idea what to expect, um, how many people would show up, and this was just overwhelmingly fantastic. With no family to accept the burial flags, two community members stood in their place. Ten-year-old Cyrus Fawcett, who's a member of the Young Marines, accepted the burial flag for walls. It was fun. It was nice to be able to do this. Gold Star mother Patricia Lucas accepted the flag for Mendenhall. I am blessed. I am so grateful for all of the service. I am grateful for uh, uh, that there are times when we can really appreciate them and the sacrifices. Patricia's son, Jeffrey Lucas, was a Navy SEAL. He died in 2005 when his helicopter was shot down in Afghanistan. The things that you give up to be in the service, I don't think people really realize all the time how much it costs until this is the ultimate cost. So uh, I'm, I'm just grateful and I am so happy to be here today. Patricia said it was heartwarming to see how many people acknowledge that sacrifice today by showing up for two veterans they didn't even know. So heartwarming. Lincoln Memorial Funeral Home and Dignity Memorial Homeless Veterans Burial Program took care of all the costs of today's funeral. They believe all vets deserve to have a dignified service regardless of their circumstances.